here we just wanted to show you the very large, very informative um, display uh, that is on the new T775 Series 2000. Um, it's a very uh, easy to follow and um, uh, display. The programming of the T775 is also very easy to follow. It's very intuitive. It's very similar to like programming your cell phone. Uh, we try to use very easy, plain, simple uh, English uh, for you to follow. Um, and we think we've been very successful in, in doing that uh, by some of the feedback that we've received from the field. Uh, the LCD display does give you some inf uh, very important information uh, without delving into the actual programming of the, of the uh, controller. From the very uh, home screen, you can see your relay status. If you have a model that has four relays, uh, then the number of relays will display at the very top. If your model only has two relays, then you'll just have relay one and two. Uh, beneath the relays is your relay status. It'll tell you if your relays are energized or de-energized. Uh, below that, we have your sensor, your sensor inputs. Uh, here you can see them labeled as room and outdoor. Uh, this controller does give you the ability to um, choose uh, from a canned uh, uh, selection, but it, it allows you to choose your um, labels for your sensors. So you can choose labels that are pertinent uh, to your application and mean something to the end user. Uh, then you have your modulating outputs. So if you have a model that has a modulating um, output, that status will display uh, on the bottom of the home screen, and you can actually see your percent out. Next slide, TJ. Yeah, and I just want to add, it, it truly is. In a quick snapshot, you see exactly what's going on with the system. And we've said two things. We said it was, it's very powerful. You saw that in the previous slides, and we talked about ease. And we talked a little bit about programming. I think you're going to find as we move on, you'll see how easy it is. It truly is as easy. I wouldn't say a cell phone. I'd say a VCR. I'm kind of old school <laughs> that way. But um, as we move on, it, the two best things about this controller is its power and its ease of programming. And I, and I really want you to, to hopefully we get that out of this. OK. So I'm not quite sure how many of you out there are actually familiar with the old T775, the tan and brown uh, controller that PJ mentioned earlier. Um, but my understanding, I wasn't around for that controller, but my understanding is that that was a very uh, challenging controller to work with, especially when using Reset. Uh, and one of our goals with the new controller was to vastly simplify the Reset programming on the controller. Yeah. So now instead... If I could add real quick, absolutely. Sure. I had to send out a cheat sheet for the, for the Reset model alone. We couldn't do it just with the instructions. So Honeywell actually created a separate cheat sheet for my customers that we could send out with each one. So now, instead of worrying about dip switches and relay, um, sorry, uh, reset ratios, uh, now all you need is simply four data points. You need your high and low control temperatures, which if you're doing a, a boiler reset, would be your boiler max and your boiler min. And you need the corresponding high and low outdoor temperatures. Uh, if you're doing a boiler reset, then you want to use the, the programming menu to the right, on the right, which highlights the boiler max, your outside min, boiler min, and outside max. And of course, you can reset other things besides your boiler. If you want to reset your discharge air temperature based on your room temperature, you can do that as well. Uh, in the controller, you can choose Reset, Other, and you would get the, um, the display to the left, which would ask you to put in your maximum set point, uh, your minimum set point, and then your um, Reset B B1, which is your outdoor uh, temperature here. So again, you only need four four points to set up this reset curve. The controller sets the curve up for you and actually displays your set point on the home screen for each output. Which is terrific, because now you can see your actual set point. And then you can also remember, you can see what is the output, how many relays are running, or what is your modulating output, so you can tell if it's working properly. Um, and yeah, absolutely ease. If you look to the one on the right, which is one we're talking about today, the boiler reset, if we just keep hitting enter, this thing's going to take you through step by step, from boil max all the way down to exit. Once you get the exit, this this controller is programmed. And I just want to point out the differential in this, and I talked about this in the last presentation. The differential is an important thing. When you're dealing with the modulating output, your differential is, is factory set at 20. We need to keep it there, because it's not a temperature differential, but it's a proportional band. And that'll keep the control from short cycling, and that's why they made that as default as 20. That 20 also carries over into the relays. When it's in the relays, it's now 20 degrees differential, which is a true differential. Now, 
most people don't want that. You can't have that typically, especially in this type of control. So you're going to want to reduce that back down to 2 to 5, whatever you'd like for a temperature differential. So that's just the point that differential screen is very important that you, that you do go over that and, and adjust it accordingly. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, uh, and it speaks to, again, the versatility of the controller. The T775R has the ability to do a reset. If you do not want to reset some of your outputs, you have that option as well. So if you had a T775R, you know, uh, on the job and the customer didn't want, um, you know, a couple of the outputs to be reset, you can use the one controller, use two of your relays in the reset, and use your other two relays um, uh, not in the reset mode. These are all independent outputs, so you can um, choose which outputs you want to reset, if any. Which is nice for pump control, because you can set one for reset, then the next relay for your pump, um, one with a shutdown if you wanted to. Now, also keep in mind that when you do set it for reset, and if all the other relays are set for reset, they're going to follow the same curve. There's only one reset curve per controller. That is correct. correct. That leads me into my next point. Uh, there is a single curve, uh, reset curve for the controller, and that curve must be set up on the very first output of the controller. So if you have um, a modulating output model, then that reset curve must be set up on the first mod out output, and then you can use that same reset curve for all subsequent outputs. Uh, sensor A is always the controlled temperature. So in a boiler reset, that would be your boiler water temperature, and sensor B is always going to be your outdoor temperature. Next slide. And here I just want to give you a, an example of how the controller sets up that, that reset curve for you. In this example, um, when it is 20 degrees outside, you want your boiler operating at maximum capacity, that's 210 degrees. Um, when the outdoor temperature begins to, to heat up, and as it moves to 70 degrees outside, you don't need that boiler operating at you know, the maximum temperature. You can reset that, so now the set point will be 160 degrees. And that's where you get your, your cost savings. So that red line is actually um, configured for you in the controller, and the set point is actually displayed for you um, on, on the home screen. One thing I didn't show you on this, um, in this presentation is that the T775 has multiple home screens. The first home screen that you saw is the live home screen, which displays your sensor inputs. There's a home screen for each of your outputs on the controller. So if you have four relays and two modulating outputs, then you will have six additional home screens that you can go in and you can see your set point for that output, you can see the sensor that it's controlling to, and you can see if that relay is energized or not. Um, the nice thing about this uh, reset curve is that your set point won't exceed um, or go below your maximum minimum temperature. Which is important for your condensing boilers. We've got to definitely set that minimum to a certain um, degree. That way we don't have any, any kind of sweating of the, of the boiler. Okay. Um, another nice feature on the controller is the... Um, uh, interval uh, time clock and scheduler. Uh, each T775 comes with its own time clock and scheduler, so you no longer need uh, an external time clock. Uh, you have the ability to use the setback feature um, on the, the digital input and for the scheduler. So you can set back the temperature um, during unoccupied times and, and save energy that way as well. Um, you can access the setback by either using the scheduler or using the digital input on the controller. And this is a feature that's available on all T775s, regardless of the model. Uh, and if you're doing a setback, um, again, remember that your, reset, your outputs all use the same reset curve. So your setback set point is going to be an offset from that reset curve. So in normal operations for heating, the offset will be a negative value, as you can see there on the slide. And then for cooling, your offset will, of course, be a positive, a positive value. So it basically shifts your output curve uh, down. One thing I do want to be mindful of is that if you're using, um, if you're using a, an offset, do be mindful of the minimum temperature uh, there because it can slip below your, it can, uh, slip below your minimum set, if you can Good. see that. Yes, we're showing that there. Right. So you, that's something you do need to be mindful of. And I'll tell you, the addition of the, of the scheduling or the time clock, the capability of setback on all these 775 was a huge addition that it didn't have before at all. And it's really turned this standalone control into a small automation control that does not communicate. I mean, it's yeah. really pretty amazing. It's made it even twice as powerful as the 